good afternoon. Uh, at the outset, I would like to thank Dr. Bansi Sabu uh, for inviting me here to speak on meal replacement therapy in overweight diabetics. Now, um, I had a very good beginning by Dr. Makkar and Dr. Singh, wherein they said that obesity is a problem and we really need not discuss that more. But what is required is treatment. And it's very, very easy, really very easy, even as a dietitian, for me to say that, you know, diet is very important, so is exercise. And a lot of times in my practice, I find that after saying diet is important and one should eat, um, World Health Day just went a couple of days back on 7th April, and the theme this year was from farm to the plate. How many of us actually eat really from farm to the plate. Most of the time we are into processing the same farm food so much and making it calorically, calorically dense, like Dr. Singh was saying, adding ghee or maybe adding oil, etc. that this food from farm to our plate really gets up in calories and therefore then it leads to overweight. Most of the times in my practice when I start practicing and I talk to people about you know eating fresh fruits and vegetables, the typical answer is, Every day at 5 o'clock I'll eat a fruit, isn't that boring? And sometimes also when we go out, um, say we come for a conference, at 5 o'clock we have nice coffee and cookies or tea and cookies which are again high in fat and most of the time we are wondering really do I need to eat fruits today I can have a cup of coffee with some cookies and that there goes caloric uh, excess and therefore I think that's the time when one has to halt and need something which is more realistic as an intervention. Another group, I'm going to talk about it while I present, but another group where realistic interventions are required is a group of young individuals who are traveling. So like young, uh, young um, people who are traveling a lot for their work and at such time they really do not have the privilege of eating fresh home cooked food. Any food which is available outside the house you will all agree is usually calorie laden and therefore this kind of meal replacement intervention is a really good strategy for such people to maintain or reduce or maintain weight. Actually reduction of weight is one of the easiest thing. I always say because if you decide that you are not going to eat one meal a day and you're going to walk for one hour a day, you're definitely going to lose weight. But the point is how long? How long are you not going to eat and how long are you not keep going to walk? The day you stop doing either of them, weight gain starts. And therefore, it is not only about weight loss, it's more about weight maintenance. So I'm, not, I'm going to just go through a couple of slides because Dr. Makkar and Dr. Singh have spoken all about it and they have also spoken about how to measure and estimate the um, uh, uh, fat. Okay, now this is very interesting. 16% of Indian women are overweight or obese. 12% of Indian men are overweight and obese. And it's seen more in women because of two reasons. A, they are more glued on to the television. And in fact, uh, Bombay, in Bombay Times of India, just three days back carried an article that if you see more serials or more TV which has um, romantic drama and which women see Saas Bahu serials, it leads to more weight gain as compared to seeing serials which are horror based. Because I think you're just shivering or running to other room which you top typically don't do with a Saas Bahu drama. So and also women are more approached to food. So every time we enter kitchen, it's the woman of the house who knows where is sugar, where is jaggery, where is biscuits, where is whatever. So and the whole concept about not leaving food, not throwing away food, which is so close to our culture, which is good. I am not propagating that one should throw food, but one can just put a little lesser on your plate and not eat leftovers from others' plates. So this is what Dr. Makkar has spoken about and I'm go not going to speak about this. Now this is something, again, which I, what I have been speaking about, factors affecting weight gain, dietary patterns versus activity patterns, which very interestingly, Dr. Singh said that most of our kids are more interested in scoring in 10th and 12th standard rather than actually going out and playing. And so is with adults. We find 100 reasons not to exercise, but don't find one reason really to exercise. Wrong choice of food and wrong perception of food. Lot of times the perception is that the food is low in calories, but it is not. And this is a whole uh, audience of doctors where I want to say typically, you know, the perception is Mari biscuit is very low in calories. It is not. You could eat a fruit which is much, much lower in calories, but perception is. So food perception also goes a long way in food selection. 
portion control and like dr singh says pizzas are becoming big coming up with a cold drink and sometimes we just tend to take a bigger plate if our child is eating instead of making a small roti mother will think let me make a little big he'll eat only one so he's actually eating two instead of eating one so portion control sensory specific satiety wherein you feel full after eating certain food sedentary lifestyle and lack of non activity non exercise activity thermogenesis this is also important especially in adults where we find that people actually go out to the gym and exercise and after that do not get up from the chair even ask for a glass of water and you find that just because they are exercising they are not going to lose weight if they are not active throughout the day so like i was saying in phases of weight loss the first phase of weight loss is beautiful it's easy where the weight just comes down smoothly and you are so happy with it and second phase is the phase of weight maintenance and this is life long it does not stop ever and the day you stop doing what you were doing or the day you stop being a good girl or a good boy you go back where you started and this is what is actually a problem of obesity treatment so what is obesity uh, you know treating obesity so typically it's not about losing a lot of weight it is basically just lo loss of some 5% of body weight but which is maintained over at least one year and that's the bigger challenge rather than losing that 5% of body weight and like all of you know there are a lot of intervention studies in diabetes which have shown that actually lifestyle modification uh, decreases the risk there is a relative risk reduction as compared to any drug intervention now when we look at diet there is a whole big range of spectrum of dietary advice it can be very very simple you know eat less so if you are eating two chapatis eat one chapati if you are eating two bowls of rice eat one one bowl of rice two very very fancy things like fat counting um, um carbohydrate counting etc etc meal replacers are one of them so with that what we come to is that energy reduction ultimately in weight loss energy reduction is the main component of weight control very low calorie diet for example when people start eating too little you find that they start suffering from micronutrient deficiencies because when they start eating little they also eat little of vegetables a little of fruits so on and so forth clinical studies have also indicated that use of fiber actually helps weight loss and actually helps to maintain hunger so you feel hungry less often when you are having fiber and fiber supplement and therefore one of the therapies there we are looking at is meal replacement which has all of this it is uh it, there is a lot of micronutrient which goes in this therefore one doesn't suffer from the deficiencies of micronutrient and most of the meal replacements come with high amount of fiber which actually gives satiety to the person who is having it now there are two kinds of meal replacers which are available in the market they are very low calorie diets and low calorie diets and i'm going to be speaking about both of them no very low calorie diets are less than 800 kilo calories per day so these diets will typically in a whole day if you choose to replace all meals with it will only give you lesser than 800 calories per day whereas low calorie diets will give you more than 800 calories a day usually between 800 and 1200 calories and one has to, one can tailor them integrate them into even the normal dietary plan now this is a interesting slide which i like probably would interest you that you know we eat a packet of chips and i'm not taking any brand name without even thinking and after eating this we are ready to eat a dinner because this goes with a movie or a, with a cricket match so on and so forth and look at it 547 calories if you look at a samosa 700 calories samosa is just a starter it's not even a meal yeah look at a burger yeah and look at a pizza yeah so now that means it is not only about western food typically it said that pizza burgers are bad guys and all indian foods are sacrosanct which is not so even your homemade samosas are as calorie laden so therefore and this is what we actually eat at 4 o'clock when 4 o'clock we are hungry this is what is available all around us so what is the role of meal replacer the key role of meal replacer is to limit the food choice for example somebody is hungry at 4 o'clock i do not know what is eaten here but in bombay the most favorite thing is vada pav yeah now if you eat a vada pav which is 400 calories there's no way you're going to lose weight even if you are eating boiled vegetables all through the day 
Yeah. So typically, that is the time when meal replacers actually help you. So meal, meal, meal replacers are structured. They are well-measured dietary components that is easier to use with in a diet strategies. And it also aims at controlling portion and high caloric consumption. Now, this is one of my most favorite slide, which is about partial meal replacement therapy. So meal replacement therapy by itself are of two types. One of the therapies where you replace everything. You replace a breakfast, lunch, dinner, a snack, everything with a meal replacer. But I personally believe in my practice, whatever I see, people usually do not go wrong with their lunch or dinner. Typically, people will eat roti, sabzi, dal, chawal and things around it. They are not actually going to eat deep fried foods. But come 5 o'clock in evening, something happens and the whole diet goes out the window. Because 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock you are hungry. If you go to office and you try to order something, it will be typically a fried snack. If you don't do that, you will go out and buy something from the local store. will be chakli, some chivda, some sev. Any of these items, they are also partial peel replacement therapies when you are replacing that small meal, that 5 o'clock meal, only the partial part and rest of the time you are giving a good homemade diet so that person is happy that he is eating food as well as happy because he is not snacking around. So the partial meal replacement therapy is what I spoke about wherein you are only replacing certain parts of the meal. Now there is a lot of data to show that meal replacers have a lot of effect in type 2 diabetes. And again one of the, one of the trials which uh, I am showing here is wherein just in obesity treatment they uh, randomized people into three groups wherein one uh, group had a usual care wherein they were given just education about weight management. Uh, in the second group there was brief lifestyle style counseling where with help of life coaches who were reminding them who were explaining them and the third group was enhanced brief lifestyle counseling where people along with life coaches were giving them meal replacers so they were giving them ready to eat foods they were they were helping them to choose food and it was found that the most weight was lost by the arm which used enhanced meal replacement therapy and this was maintained over 24 months that's more important so this is another study which all of you must be very well aware again where there was diabetes specific nutrition given to a group which did not lose weight after three months of going on a diet so 96 people were put on a diet for three months those who did not lose five percent weight were kept on a meal replacer and you found actually People who were on meal replacers lost more weight, had a better HbA1c, had lower triglyceride, had better HDL, so on and so forth. Then there was look ahead trial. Again, I do not need to tell this audience about look ahead trial. We all know it was culminated because they really did not see that much of cardiological benefit. But the interesting part was they did lose weight and they had much less pharmacotherapy as compared to the group which did not take meal replacers. Then there is a Y weight uh, um, uh, study in which again the participants were given complete meal replacement. Their meals were replaced as well as their snacks were replaced and after 12 weeks these people were told to follow the same dietary principles. They were given food and it was found that most of the people after a year and a half, that is 552 days, actually lost weight and kept the weight down. Their HbA1c's obviously decreased because they had weight loss. Dr. Singh was talking about young girls having PCOD and meal replacers have a huge role in actually helping the women with PCOD. Again, there was, found, there was this was a study where an eight-week weight loss regime, which is two meal replacements a day, and after that, a six-month six weight maintenance diet was given. Now, if you look at this diet, it is less than 120 grams of carbohydrate per day. Now, being a dietitian, I can tell you, to get a diet with about a 120 gram of carbohydrate in India on people who even consume non-vegetarian food is an uphill task. I, I, have, I would be unable to even plan it. And even to achieve that kind of nutritional profiling, you need to add a meal replacer to existing meal plan, whatever they are adding. And it was found that their weight dropped, their waist circumference dropped, their body dropped, a body fat dropped, and of course, they had uh, regular menstrual cycles. So therefore, now the most often question asked to me is, is it really necessary to be on a meal replacer? Can't we just eat 
very little. Now there are two things. Meal replacers by themselves really do not have taste, so you are never tempted. Can I have one more glass? Also, they, are, they cost more. Therefore, you are going to think about having them again. Whereas at home, if the dal is good, you don't ever think twice before taking a one more chapati and saying, oh, today dal was nice, so I had more, one more chapati. So that's the difference. And of course, there is a study to show it that there was meal replacement program and there was again a structured meal plan which was equating in calories to the meal replacement plan. And when these people were followed up for a long time, I'm sorry, it was shown that after 40 weeks, People on meal replacement lost much more weight as compared to those on the diet with having similar calories. Now meal replacers are typically protein rich and lot of times there is a lot of doubt whether this is going to elevate their creat. And therefore, um, again being a dietitian, I see patients every day and believe me, protein intake of Indians is very poor. What is recommended is 0.8 gram per kg body weight. Even dietitians in India do not consume more than 0.6 gram per kg body weight, who are very aware of what they eat. So typically people usually eat about 0.3 to 0.4 gram per kg body weight. And by taking a protein rich meal replacer, you still come to about 0.7 gram per kg body weight. You don't even reach what is normally required. And hence just don't worry that it, taking in a protein meal replacer rich meal replacer is actually going to elevate creat. In fact, it will normalize the dietary profile. It will give you much more protein and it is shown that replacing carbohydrates for proteins causes much, I mean, replacing proteins for fat causes much more weight loss than replacing carb, uh, uh, carbohydrates for fat. Therefore, instead of decreasing fat, typically what happens when people eat lesser fat, they start eating more carbohydrate and that does not cause weight loss as beautifully as when you're decreasing fat and start eating proteins. So proteins will also cause more satiety, therefore one will eat lesser and therefore protein rich, rich meal replacers are very important. There are meal replacers which come with both kinds, whey based and soya based and there is a huge movement where people want to go off dairy but the data shows that whey protein based meal replacers cause more weight loss than soya based meal replacers. Also in my personal practice, I have found that Indians are actually do not do so well on soya. They start showing gastrointestinal symptoms of fl flatus or sometimes even acidity. So whey based meal replacers, I have found more success than soya based meal replacers. What are the precautions? The first precaution is don't get overzealous. We are not recommending a rapid weight loss. So typically when women come to me, we have bought a dress to wear in our wedding anniversary after 10 days. So in 10 days, I want 10 kilos off. Not done. Even meal replacers don't do it. Of course, for pregnant and nursing women, we are not advising this. I personally believe don't use it as a sole source of nutrition because only nutritional factors are not important. Anti-nutritional factors are as, as important as nutritional factors are. And with this, you do not get it. We fiber, um, other things are more available in fresh fruit and vegetable, which cannot be replaced by anything in this world. Um, hypersensitivity to any component of the formulation. For example, somebody is gluten sensitive and the formulation has oats, then one has to be careful. If somebody is lactose intolerant and it's a web lactose-based supplement, then one has to be very, very uh, careful while using it. And then, of course, benefits other than weight loss are that you get a lot of micronutrients every time you're consuming meal replacers. It is not a replacement to eating good food, but nevertheless, it is a sound replacement. So where do we use meal replacers in India? Picky eaters, I will not eat this sabzi, I will not eat that fruit. You need to give them this. Travelers on weight loss program, like I said, it's very difficult to find good food. Before and after bariatric surgery, very, very important because this teaches you to be satisfied with one cup. And that's a very, very good lesson before a bariatric surgery. And I believe it's the best option for a mid-meal snacks. Uh, I have just 50 seconds. So there are a lot of meal replacers which come with various bioactive agents like Garcinia Cambogia. They can come with green tea extract. They can come with Caraluma Fimriata, which is another kind of bioactive. And they are good also because they are giving you certain kind of advantage in terms of polyphenols or micronutrients. So thank you very much for a patient hearing.